and welcome to Calvary Premier Chapel, the young adult service of Calvary Charismatic Baptist Church. Everyone in CBC, I just want to say hey, and I am Josephine and I will be your leader on duty for today. Now, today's service is about to be amazing and I just hope that you guys are ready and prepared for everything that's about to come. Now, before we start the service, um, let's just share a word of prayer so heavenly father we just want to thank you for another sunday where we can come and fellowship um once again you know in our various places our various locations in our homes but lord thank you for making a medium um online where we can come and worship you in a new way and i just pray that your spirit and your hand will be over this service and you know you will get the glory you will get the honor in everything that is done today and everything that is said today um just protect us, guide us, cover us, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see you in a new way this service. Amen and amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Calvary Premier Chapel CPC. Here at CPC, we have four core values. Friendliness, guys, get friendly in the comments, you know, you know, say hello to someone new, welcome someone, you know, just make everyone feel at home and make everyone feel comfortable um attendance you're here today but guess what get someone else on so that attendance can be higher okay you know just invite someone you know someone you haven't seen in a while someone who you miss someone who you feel like you know will benefit from this service just get them on and you know just let us worship together all in the comments and let us know that you're here commitment be committed to the things of god to the vision of cpc to the gospel to god to everything um that is gospel orientated just be committed to the vision of you know going out preaching the gospel and you know mobilizing young kids for um for missions so go out and you know be committed and dedicated to the things of god and tithe and offering tithe and offering giving 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 we love to give here at cbc and during this time of quarantine cbc you guys have been amazing so once again thank you thank you thank you for having a heart of giving and um yeah so welcome to our service welcome to cpc we love that you are here with us now in the comments guys i want to see some fire emojis i want to see you know dancing emojis i want to see you guys get ready for the best choir and i'm not just gassing it man i'm not gassing it the best choir Com. P P T. Now, guys, clap your hands in the comments as P P T take us into a time of worship. Let's go.
for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh. We see thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, 
coming after me, yeah. There's no war you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Wow, P P T God richly bless you. I mean, the visuals, the vocals, the band. We honestly and truly love and appreciate you guys. And guess what? We cannot wait to worship with you guys in the real life. In the real life. We cannot wait to worship with you guys. So guys, get ready because when we come back to church, eh? When we come back to church, eh? You guys are not ready, you. PBT, I want to see you guys in the comments. I just tell them they're not ready, you. They're not ready because PBT are about to do a madness. Praise and worship Sunday when we first come back. I want to see all your handkerchiefs. I want you guys, I want you guys in comfortable shoes because we're gonna dance and we're gonna worship like never before. Now we are about to go into the word. Now, two weeks ago before um Mother's Mothering Sunday, um Bishop was talking about Acts 4, and we're just gonna continue with that preaching and um we're just going to show a recap of what was said and it's going to continue from then on where he finishes the service. So guys, get your notes ready, your notes, continue, continue them from the last service and just be ready to receive a word. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God richly bless you for logging on. I'm delighted to have you here with me. It's an exciting time. I want to say thank you um, for the worship team. I want to say thank you for the great solo that was sung. May the Lord bless you. Before we start, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. I want to bless you for who you are. I thank you, the Lord, you've granted us yet another Sunday in, in this year to be able to come before your presence. I commit our study into your hands. You are the word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. As we uh, deliberate on your word, my prayer is that your grace will abound over us in Jesus name help me oh God to deliver your word without fear or favor great grant me the anointing to teach your people with all sincerity in Jesus name and let everybody say amen God Rachel bless you before that I want to just spend a minute or two to pray with everybody everybody who is listening to me right now I want to spend a minute to pray for you right now. If you are sick of every part of your body, I believe in divine healing. I believe in the power of God to heal us from our sicknesses. And I'm a, a student of the healing of God. I've received healing. I've prayed for people to be healed. So I believe that God's healing power is still available. Just lay your hands on yourself wherever you are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for everybody who is not doing well, who is sick of any form of disease. I pray for divine healing right now. Anybody suffering from COVID, the sickness we are all fighting with at this time, I ask for the blood of Jesus to heal them. Lord, just as you have been with us all these months and weeks, I uh, pray that you continue to be with us. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. There'll be somebody who will be watching me at this time. You are in bed. You can't even uh, get up. I pray for the power of God to be over you. And I ask you to rise up to your healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power of the healing power of the healing Jesus be with you wherever you find yourself in. Whatever time you're listening to this broadcast, I pray that the power of God will be so strong with you. We want to thank God for your healing in Jesus' name. 
and let everybody say amen. God richly bless you. I want you to text somebody, tell them Bishop is on the teachings we're going to receive this Sunday morning. It's a very great teaching. We are still in the book of us, studying from the book of us, and I believe that this is one of the greatest books that you can ever uh, lay your hands on. So just text somebody, tell them Bishop is on, and let's all go into the Bible together. Today, I'll be preaching, I'll be moving to Acts chapter 4. I put this in three. Number one, the power of God in operation. Number two, the questioning of the power. And number three, the response. The response is in defense of the gospel. Now, Peter and John stood up and they defended the gospel. They really defended the gospel. And I call it defending the gospel. Every believer, wherever you are, you should be able to defend the gospel to the best of your ability. Every Christian, anytime, anywhere that I go, that somebody bring a, a, a topic about God and avail myself to talk about. I will not keep quiet unless somebody run down. I won't be fighting the person, but I will say what I know. If it's a civil debate, I will be part of it. And there are three things that I've written down. If you are going to defend your faith, um, that you need to, number one, I call it know your belief. Most of the time, we are not able to defend our faith because we don't even know what we believe. It will be amazing you put 10 Christians there and they have all been Christian over two, three, four, five years. And if you ask them to give you five verses, they don't know. Give you 10 verses, they don't know. We don't study the Bible, but the Bible commands us to study, to show ourselves, approve a worker needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. But we find ourselves wanting, if we are to give verses, uh, we can't even say 10 verses. If you ask us what is righteousness, we don't even know what righteousness is. If you ask us what is the end time teaching, we don't even know what the end time teaching is. When this pandemic came, um, people are everywhere pushing us. This is the Antichrist. This is this. And we don't even know the answer. First, you have to know your belief. You need to know your basic belief that we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in his power. We believe in his birth. We believe in his, um, first we believe in his conception um, by the Virgin Mary. We believe in his birth. We believe in his life. We believe in his death. We believe in his resurrection. And we believe in his ascension. We should be able to believe in all of this. We should be able to believe in John 1.1. 1, 1, that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. If you met somebody, when Christians say Jesus is God, um, which is a belief that other faiths don't believe that. Uh, Jesus can't be God. God is one. If somebody asks you, how can Jesus be God and be this? You can refer him to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Finish. That is our, our Christian theology. Jesus is God. He's not only Jesus. He's God. We need to know our basic doctrine. So know it. Number one, you must know your belief. Number two, You've got to learn your belief. Every leader of CPC, you've got to learn your belief. Every minister, every core one leader, every core two leader, every member, you should be able when you are asked what is the belief, your belief, you should be able to tell them. If you don't know anything, that becomes sad. So we have to. And number three, we must be able to defend it. We must be able to say, um, stand and talk about our Bible, we need to be able to engage people. Sometimes when you engage people friendly, not fighting, anybody who is going to fight you in discussion, don't do that. But anybody that wants to open a civil debate, log in there. Let them know you are a Christian. Sometimes in talking to them, in defending, they can come with questions that can help you or questions that you don't know. You will come back, ask your ministers. If your ministers don't know, they will also ask um, the pastors or so. We discuss it. We all don't have all the answers. Even I, I don't have all the answers. Um, I, I remember last month, I put something. We have something I call Speakers Forum. The speakers that come to CPC, uh, sorry, 
that comes to CSC, we have a forum there. I put a question there that somebody asked me and I put it there and I, what do you think about this? I didn't know. Nobody know everything in the scriptures. So engaging people and discussing, it will help you to know how shallow you are and to help you to know how prepared you have to prepare. So number one, know your belief. Number two, learn your belief. And number three, be prepared. Some of us are even embarrassed to talk about Christianity. I haven't seen any Muslim who is embarrassed to talk about Islam. I haven't seen any Buddhist who is embarrassed to talk about Buddhism. Why are we shying away? Jesus said, if you deny me in front of people, I will also deny you. Peter did not. Let's know our belief. Let's learn our belief. And let's defend our belief. Hallelujah. God, Rachel, bless you. Uh, in ending chapter 4, I'll be speaking um, about this uh, next part of Acts chapter 4 that is believers prayer for boldness and I want to read it um, normally the story recounting the story is, is lovely hallelujah Acts chapter 4 verse 23 to 31 and being let go they went on their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made the heavens and the air and the sea and all that is in it, whom by thy mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heavens rage and the people imagine vain things? The king of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For a truth against the holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever their hand and their counsel determined to be done. And now, Lord, behold, mark this, this verse, for it's very important to me. And now, Lord, behold, they are threatening and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that we may speak thy word, hallelujah, by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that sign and that wonders may be done uh, in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place were shaken and they were all assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. And this is a very interesting um, occasion of the believers. After they have spoken, the people said, don't speak again about the name of Jesus. And Peter said, look here, uh, it's better to obey God rather than man. Uh, we will still go and, and speak the and, and, and they released them. And when they went, they told the whole disciples what has happened. And they started praising God. They started praising God, giving glory to God. And they prayed a prayer. The Lord, behold, they are threatening. These people want to threaten us. Yes, we know. They're going to use everything. They're going to use legal means. They're going to use legislation as is happening today. And they want to do everything to mute the church. They didn't pray that take us out. But they said, give us boldness. That no matter their threats, we will be bold to speak. That is one of the things I've always said. That nobody can stop me from preaching the gospel. And from believing what I believe. If it means that I have to go to jail to preach the gospel, I'll be the first pastor to go to jail. If it comes to, the, if anybody told me, don't mention the name of Jesus in the church, I'll be the first pastor to go to jail. And that is what they pray, that God, look at their threatening. We know this threatening is going to stop. They're going to continue and continue, but give us the boldness that even in the middle of threatening, we'll be able to preach your gospel. Hallelujah. In your life, have you prayed to God to give you boldness? Or you shy away? 
You don't want to talk about your fate because you're afraid your manager might sack you. You are afraid your manager might say something. I'm not talking about disobeying and things and even at work time when everybody should be working, you are preaching about your spare time. There was a lady who um, was working with BA and was wearing a cross like this. They say you can't wear it. They say I'll wear it. What prevents me from wearing it? So most of the time, anywhere I am, I have a cross. I wear my cross. I, I want somebody to say you can't wear the cross to this place. I wear my cross. I'm proud of my Jesus. I'm not shy of my Jesus. Are you shy of your Jesus? I pray for boldness to display Jesus anywhere I go. People know me for my cross. Uh, I was preaching in one church. One, church, one, one young boy said, oh, Bishop, I wish I'd grow like you. I won your cross. I took my cross and I gave it to the boy in South Africa. The pastor was amazed. I said, yes, for this boy, to envy nothing but the cross, I give it to, to, to the boy. I, I was coming from Ghana, I went to preach in a church, and the pastor said, Bishop, you know what? I will love one of your cross. I want an old one. And if I, when I go, I'm going to give this to him. I'm going to give this to him. It's, it's become my hallmark, and I love it. I would rather be known by this than be known by... Uh, Probably uh, anything else. I don't want to say anything to offend anybody. But we got to be bold to face when they come to us and talk about our faith when we are met with people who want to talk to us against our faith. We, they pray that give us boldness. And they prayed for it. And the Bible says after they have prayed to show that God listened to it, the place that they were praying, it, sh it, 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 it shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with boldness, you know that you are filled with, the, with, with boldness. And I pray that anybody listening to me, watching me today, will be filled with the Holy Spirit and will be filled with boldness. You'll be able to go out there and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. I've written three things here. Praying for boldness. Number one, I've said that you must identify an area in your life that you are praying for. These people needed boldness, so they prayed to God specifically. They didn't say... They were very specific. Give us boldness that we'll be able to go and preach and that there'll be healings and signs and wonders. They were specific. And God granted them the boldness there. And you can look that from Acts chapter 4, going chapter 5, chapter 6, miracles were happening everywhere they went. Identify the area you want God to use you and pray for it. Number two, pray for it. You identify the area, maybe my area... It's not boldness I need. Probably I want to speak in tongues. Maybe I want this gift of uh, uh, healing. Maybe I want this. Maybe I want discernment. Maybe um, the area that you need is even for to be strong. Pray for it. Pray for it. As they prayed for it, God gave them the desired resource and expect resource. Identify your area, pray for it, and expect a resource. If you pray for something and you don't expect a resource, then you, you, you didn't even have faith. If I have headache and I take paracetamol, I expect that after 30 minutes or one hour, the headache goes down. If I take the paracetamol and I don't expect anything, then why did I take it anyway? So when you identify your area and you pray for it, expect God to move you into a new dimension. And I believe that as you do that, the Lord will move you. Hallelujah. In ending as chapter 4, I ended with the believers having everything in common. Having everything in common. And let me also read that. I love the, the reading of it. Just I don't have a good um, reading voice, but I love it. As chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and one soul. Very important. We, we spoke about it. Neither said any of them that 
the art of the things which he possessed his own. This one I think is King James, so it's difficult to read. But they had all things in common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and with great grace came upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked anything. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the price of the things which they sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution were made unto every man according to their need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is of being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the county of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Hallelujah. Now, this scripture is so interesting. Um, when people have problems with giving and fundraising in church and, and make it look like it's today that um, preachers love money, excuse me. You are telling people to give and whatever. It's never true. Giving is part of scripture. Giving is part of our service. Giving is part of being a child of God. In fact, the whole world is give and take. Jesus Christ was given to us for God so loved the way that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we come to God, we come to God and recognize as um, the, the Lord says that whatever we have is of him. So when he demands it from us, we give it back to him. In the olden days, in New Testament, they were more crazy givers than we are today. Today, you ask people to give thanksgiving, which probably it could be their 100 pounds, their 500 pounds, their 1,000 pounds, and they think you have asked them something that they have not heard before. Look, these people were selling their houses, their land, and bringing everything to the apostles' feet. For it to be shared among everybody. Hallelujah. Most of the things that the church have done is for everybody. I was speaking in one um, conference where they were bashing Christians. I said, look, everybody must shut up. If we are going to be truthful to ourselves, the church has done more for society than governments. And I challenge you in one country that who are your political parties? They, they, they asked, they gave me the names of two political parties. I said, has any of the political party with their own money built hospital? No. Have any of them built schools? No. Have any of them with their own money, not the money of the government, because the political party is a business entity. Have any of them built schools with their own political money, uh, party money? I said, no. I said, how many schools have in the church built? How many hospitals have in the church built? How many orphanages have in the church built? So don't demonize the church because uh, they asking for money or one pastor ran away with money or one pastor is being flamboyant with whatever. But look at the good thing the Lord has used the church to do. When the church, a good church has money, is thinking of the people, is thinking of schools. Even as we sit here, we have three schools here. We have orphanages. We have um, institutions helping uh, the poor. How many businesses think that way? If a business is going to give to an institution, they are doing that mostly for tax breaks. But we, that is our main calling, to help the needy. How do we help the needy if we don't have people like this in the book of us? How come that everybody had? Because people who had were not afraid to bring. And these people were more crazy givers. They sold their lands and, and brought it. Wow. Today, if you go and tell somebody in the church, go and sell your house and bring all the money, um, you'll be in the headline. You'll be, um, you, you'll trend. You'll be the pastor, the most wicked pastor in the world, asking people to sell their lands and bring in it. We're not asking you to do that. But do your portion. 
Don't let anybody discourage you about your giving to church. There are people who will say so many things, this, that, 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 that. But giving, without giving, the church will not exist. Anybody that attack the giving in the church is attacking the fabric of the church. It means if he's able to discourage a lot of people from paying their tithe, if he's able to discourage a lot of people from paying their, their offering, then the church will not have money. And if the church doesn't have money, look, it costs money to preach the gospel. When this pandemic came, the government has brought so many things to have small business, nothing for church. So have you asked yourself, the small churches, the pastors with the smaller churches, how are they survived? A lot of churches have collapsed, and that is what the devil will be interested in. Uh, I, was, uh, I pray that we come to a point as Calvary that we'll be able to absorb smaller churches that are struggling. When this pandemic came, thank God for our churches in Europe, people still kept on giving. And our churches in Africa, there was no giving there. We were able to sponsor the pastors for over six months because no income was coming in there. I pray that not only will we be able to sponsor Calvary pastors, but God will place us in a position that other pastors from other churches who don't have income because of this COVID will be able to help them. So giving in the church must not be something that we are afraid to talk about. If you are taking the money to use it for unnecessary things, then um, you, 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 you have to stop. As long as we are using it for the gospel, we'll use it for the gospel, we'll talk about it, and he who has ears, let him listen. And the Bible says that give and it shall be given unto you. Uh, I was speaking to somebody and say, oh, somebody said that give and it shall come back to you. It's out of context. And I said, yes, Jesus was talking about judging others and brought in. But that term, give and it will come back to you good measure. It's already a principle in the book of Malachi. It says, give, test me, and you will see if I will not open the windows of heaven. So it's the same principle there, just that over here Jesus was using it uh, to talk about if you judge people, the same thing will come back to you. It doesn't mean you cannot use that verse for giving because that is the principle that God says that. When you go to that land and you get money, understand that I'm the one who gave you the power. I pray that the blessing of God will be with you. I pray that God will bless you as we um, study this great book of us. With this, we come to the end of the study of book of us. Next week, we'll be moving to us chapter 5. And I believe that you have been blessed. God bless you. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody who is listening to me right now. Your word has come. Everybody listening to your word, the Bible says you send your word and you healed our diseases. I pray right now that, Lord, every disease will be healed. Everybody in confusion will receive your peace in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. In case you don't know Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. And the Lord will come and live in your life. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I've sinned. And as a result, I'm cut off from you. I want to turn from all my sins and to follow you. Thank you, Lord. For hearing my prayers as you promise. Amen. God bless you. Please don't go anywhere. And there are other announcements that will be given. And after that, I'll come back and share the grace with you. God bless you. Bishop, God richly bless you for that amazing word. We are honestly so honoured and blessed to have you as our leader, as our apostle, um, and as a teacher of, our, of the word. And um, yeah, I hope you guys were blessed because I surely was. Now we are going to go into, you know, a significantly important part of the service, which is tithe and offering. As I said earlier, CBC, we are a church that loves to give. So this is your opportunity to give.
on to God. Now, um, nothing new um, per se um, this week, but um, Tuesday Bible study, we would love you guys to be there 7 p.m. on the dot every Tuesday. Um, links will be share shared in the group chat. If you guys want to join the group chat, please email us at cbc.ccbc at gmail.com and, you know, inform us that you want to be part of the group chat. Tell us, um, yeah, so you can get all the information that is needed. And um, also, we are coming back. <laughs> I'm going to just pause because I know you guys are doing a, a phrase break in your homes. We are about to come to church once again. Fellowship with everybody here. I mean, how exciting. We're about to come back to church on the 4th, um, I believe, Easter weekend. So the 2nd to the 4th, we are going to be at church, as in in the ccbc premises as in on chairs in the building together yeah i know guys we are going to be back at church the second to the fourth of april so guys get ready get prepared pray sunday i want to show you i really want to show you guys a teaser of pray i want to show you guys a teaser of praise sunday but I'm just gonna let y'all wait. I'm gonna let the anticipation, yeah. I'm gonna let the anticipation, I'm just gonna let you guys get excited at home because it's going to be amazing. And I want you guys to be ready, prepare yourselves for Praise Sunday, okay? Um, so we're gonna be back at church once again, just to reiterate because I'm so excited and I'm tired of lockdown. <laughs> I'm tired of not seeing you guys and being able to hug you guys. Um, so yeah, we're going to be back at church from the 2nd to the 4th of April. So guys, get ready to rumble. And um, that's it for the announcements, I believe. I don't want to do the weather because, you know, it's Lisa's thing and it's not going to feel the same. So we're just going to end the service here. I'm going to send it back to Bishop as he closes for the final benediction. God bless. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you for coming back. I want to say thank you to all CPC members, leaders, and, and everybody who has been part of this successful broadcast. Um, God bless you for inviting somebody. God bless you for being on. Thank you, everybody. Last week, we hit our target of 100. This week, too, I believe we've hit the target, and we have to continue to hit this target because online or offline, still we have the same theme for the year year of uncommon growth and the growth starts on my god richly bless you i believe that this has been a good teaching for you and you're going to grow as a result of that make sure next week you bring somebody let's share the grace right now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god richly bless you may the lord bless and keep you may he be with your going out and your coming in till we meet again in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit god bless you see you next week i love you with the love of the lord and see you